Good morning. Happy Sunday. Welcome to Founders Day weekend. We are kicking off our Sunday. I am so excited that you are joining us for today's experience. We actually kicked off Founders Day weekend last night. If you were here, you know the amazing time that we had. We got to hear some amazing testimonies from from past staff, and uh, past lead pastors who have been a part of South Hills here. And it was just such a special, special time of worship and testimonies. And then of course, right, you can't have a service without an after party and some fun treats afterwards. So we had a good Pittsburgh cookie table and pretzels from the Pittsburgh pretzel shop. And it was just a great time. So we are so excited to be continuing in Founders Day weekend. We have the founder himself, Pastor Paul Wislocki with us here this morning to share a message on a legacy of faith. And that has been our theme for this weekend. So it's just going to be a good day in the house, right? A good day online with everyone who is already tuning in. If you are already joining us, I just want to say, hey, give you a huge shout out. Nancy, I see you online this morning. Uh, Tiffany, I see you. Good morning. John, I see you. Good morning, Stephen. Hey, I see a bunch of you already joining us, and it's just so good to have you. I'm excited, like I said, for today's service and everything that we have going on. I can hardly believe, right, it's the middle of April, which means we have still some more fun things coming up this next upcoming weekend. Ladies, right, this one is for you. Our Inspire Spring Tour, the one-day conference is happening this upcoming Saturday, and it's going to be a phenomenal time. So if you have not gotten your ticket, you still have time, right? Last minute, you can still get in this week. You can go to our website, www.southhillsag. Scroll down on that first page, and you will see the Captivated Spring Tour. You can click on it and still get tickets. I encourage you. It's going to be such a fantastic time. Speaker Jessica Bryan, she's amazing. She will be there. A great worship team. It's going to be a really, really wonderful conference. So again, ladies get your ticket and then that next weekend guys we didn't leave you out there is a root beer and hot dog night scheduled for you on friday april 26th at 6 30 so be checking our social medias be checking that church center app if you do not have it you have a smartphone it's going to be a great way for you to stay connected Um, and register for different events that we have going on. It's right in the app store called Church Center, and you can sign up, uh, type in South Hills Assembly, and you'll be able to see all the amazing events that we have going on here that you get to be a part of and sign up for. We also have going on this week is our MOPS group, Mothers of Preschoolers. So if you have a little one and you are maybe just looking for some deeper friendship, deeper connection, you're wanting to be poured into spiritually, right? Relationally, come on out to that group. It's amazing. So this Tuesday they meet at 9.30 a.m. So again, so many great things going on right before uh, the end of spring, right? Summer is around the corner. I know people are starting to book their summer vacations and all the good stuff, but hey, before we get to summer, we have still some amazing things left that are happening in spring. So again, be checking our socials for that. Well, hey, I am excited for the service that is happening today. It's going to be an amazing experience. What a powerful message that I know our founder, Pastor Paul Wislocki, is going to share. So you're going to want to share this live stream as well. Make sure to get it to someone this morning. You can share it um, by sharing it on your Facebook page, right? Texting this link to someone. Uh, I can share it over on YouTube. So many different ways to make sure to get this out. Well, I am ready to dive into all that God has in store for this morning. I hope you are too. I hope you're ready to worship. So if you'll join me, let's head into today's experience. All right. Good morning. How's everybody doing? I was joking with the choir. They hit the pretzel bar a little too hard last night. I don't know if anybody else feeling a little tired. So this weekend, it's all about founding, right? Founders. So what we're going to do with the set this morning is in each of these little songs, you're going to hear a song from every single decade from the 60s all the way through. So if you find the one you like, it's kind of you can do the lighter trick or you can put your cell phone up like they do at the concert, right? So we're going to start it off in the 60s. All right. Spirit. 
we thank you. We thank you for your goodness, for what you've done, your continuance of your line. We follow after you. Bye. 
you've been so good to me Morning by morning New mercies I see From 1965 to 2024, he's never failed. Like, pinch yourself, man. You're here. He hasn't failed. And this whole weekend, guys, is just about celebrating the faithfulness of God. And I've said it before, but for whatever reason, he's crazy enough to pick us. He doesn't have a backup plan. Like, we're the team, man. He doesn't got, like, the backup QB, like the Steelers, you know, oh, maybe this guy's going to drop the ball, right? Like, it's us. And all, it was so beautiful last night, just generation after generation. And I love that David says this. Actually, sorry, it's Moses in Deuteronomy. He says he is faithful to a thousand generations. It's so beautiful. I was, I was looking at the word, and Chuck mentioned it last night, because I love it. It's, it's in Deuteronomy quite a bit, but it's actually 352 times in the Bible. So you get 13 days off, so you got to pick them, right? Pick wisely. The word remember. Remember. We always start with, with the worship team. You always have to praise first. Right before we do any prayer requests or anything. Why? Because we enter his gates with thanksgiving. It's the shortcut. If you want to get in his presence, just thank you. Enter with the password, thank you. And that's what this whole morning is about, guys. We kind of went through the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, right? All these decades, his faithfulness. And so this morning, Father, we just come humbly before you. It's, what, a, what an honor to be in your presence. And how humbling to be chosen. I just love Jesus. It says he chose those. I just, you picked us, Lord. It's so crazy that the God of all creation would say, I love that guy. I love that girl. Whatever it is, Lord. We're just here in gratitude this morning for your faithfulness. And we thank you. It's the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. When we share what you've done, it's a declaration for what you're going to do. So we just, we come with gratitude this morning. Blood to wash me, all around. 
by he's staying but as he's here I just want to encourage you to reach up I can't tell you how many people even again this morning how many people came to me after last week's healing line pastor God touched me pastor God healed me some folks that came through and they said we, we felt like fainting. I know what that meant. <laughs> but that same presence is here this morning. And we want, we want to keep that momentum going. Our whole theme for this year is going forward. Amen. So I want to lead you in a prayer. How's that sound? Come on, lift your hands with me. Say it with me. Father, I thank you for your amazing faithfulness for saving a wretch like me. I give you praise. And I declare, my Father is God. Say it again. My Father is God. And there's nothing, nothing, nothing too hard for my Father. In Jesus' name. Come on, give the Lord a great big thank you this morning. Hallelujah. You may be seated. God bless you. Oh, my. We're going to get ready to receive this morning's tithes and offerings. And, oh, do we have a jam-packed service for you this morning. Uh, yesterday's beginning of Founders Day was fantastic. And as the ushers are coming forward, I'm going to ask all of you to participate this morning because this morning at the close of the service we want to get everybody around the altar see this is um, founders day and we want to get all of you around the altars all the staff that's here from the past we're going to come up here and we're going to get a photo of everybody maybe 30 years from now they'll say who is that little short guy but thank god for the legacy that we have amen we're going to get ready. Let's make our declaration this morning. Say it with me. Father, we bring our tithes and offerings as an act of worship to you, as an act of respect, as an act of honoring you, proving you true to give back in your measure. Do you believe that? Ten to hundredfold. Come triumphantly.
which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be between your eyes and you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Lord, you've written your name on our hearts. And this morning, Lord, we carry this, this legacy forward. We just give you our yes and we say we will be the ones, we will carry it to the next generation. That even as it says in the Psalms that a generation yet to be born shall praise you. And everyone said, Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us, and we'll be back after this with the word. Hey, good morning and happy Sunday. Whether joining in person or online, we are so glad that you are here. If this is your first time joining in person, we want to encourage you to stop by our Welcome Center located in the center of our lobby. There you'll find a team of people excited to connect with you and answer any questions that you might have about our church. If this is your first time joining online, we will be pinning an online connect card at the bottom of your screen. Make sure that you click on that and fill it out so we can connect with you as well. Here are a few announcements for today. Ladies, our Spring Inspire Conference is this upcoming Saturday, April 20th. This one day conference will feature a special time of worship, an empowering word from speaker Jessica Bryan and more. You still have time to get your ticket before April 20th. We are also still taking volunteers to help make this conference possible. If you would like to volunteer at this conference, please see Pastor Bree. Our Moms of Littles Mops group meets this Tuesday at 9.30 a.m. If you are a mom looking for connection and friendship, we would love to have you join us. Child care is provided. Guys, Friday, April 26th is a men's root beer and hot dog night at 6.30 p.m. Make sure to sign up at the Connection Point or on the Church Center app. And lastly, for those looking to take your next step to get more connected, we will be holding membership classes starting next Sunday, April 21st and 28th from 4 to 6 p.m. You can sign up at the Connection Point or on the Church Center app. Those are all of our announcements. Thank you so much for joining and enjoy the rest of the service. Well, good morning, South Hills Assembly of God Church. Jesus is Lord. Come on, declare with me, Jesus is Lord. Talking about the membership class, my goodness, I've been told there's over 36 names on there right now that want to be brand new members here in the church. Hallelujah! So what are you waiting for? I think it's a good place to be a member, amen? Well, today is Founders Day, and we are so excited and and how this came to pass, it was back in November, I, it was a beautiful day, and I was taking a walk through the parking lot. I, I get up and walk through the parking lot from time to time, and, and I thought, and I, I was looking at the building, and I was thankful for the ministry of Pastor Jack and Pastor Kay, and, and I was thinking of Pastor Owen, and then, then I even went further back, and I thought, you know what? It was Paul Waslocki that started. So I walked back to my office, got his phone number, and called him. and said, Paul, and we stayed on the phone, I think, close to an hour, and... Uh, it, I said, would you come preach for me next year? He goes, I'd love to. Give me the date. I took it to the staff, and then out of that staff meeting, one suggested this, one suggested that, and then Pastor Bree said, why don't we have a Founders Day? So it's come to pass. Amen. amen. So at, amen, praise God. So at this time, before Paul comes, I, I, I had to honor, I had to honor um, the Owen family. 
this would not have been complete. If, I wish Pastor could be here, but, but the next best thing is grandson Christopher. So if Christopher Van Leuven, would you please come? And Chris is just going to share a few moments uh, representing the Owen family. Can we give Christopher a good one? Well, uh, good morning to you all. Um, you know, just, just as, as you said that, Pastor Pete, about uh, wishing that Grandpa could be here, uh, and I wish that he could be here too, but, but I can tell you that he doesn't wish that he could be here <laughs> because he's in glory, and, and amen, we're all going to be there to see him one day and, and to rejoice and be with our Savior. Uh, but it's, it's such an honor and such a privilege to be here uh, and to see so many friends and familiar faces. And South Hills Assembly holds a very special place in my heart, uh, going back to when I was a little tyke wandering around in, in the old sanctuary. Um, so again, just thank you, Pastor Pete, for, for having me this morning to, to speak about my grandfather, Pastor Owen. Uh, he was my hero, so to be here is, is an honor. Um, and I want to talk about, about legacy and priorities, and, and I think that those two go hand in hand. Uh, when, when Grandpa came to South Hills in 1973, they, uh, they saw tremendous growth in, in, just, a couple of, in just a couple of short years um, by, by the grace of God. And, but, but numbers weren't his legacy. That's not what he thought his legacy was. Uh, he used to tell me that what he was most proud of was the young people who came through this church and went on to, to serve in ministry. Um, and ministry, you know, doesn't begin or end with any one of us. Uh, you know, we, we begin in someone else's ministry, and then as time goes on, other people sprout out of our ministry. Uh, and that's, that's a rich legacy. Uh, the young people from this church who, who went into ministry, the pastors on his staff who, who went on to pastor their own churches and to craft their own legacies, the, the families and people who came here and, and whose lives were changed by, by Jesus and by the Holy Spirit, that's, that's just such a rich legacy. Um, and we don't see it now, you know. We only see a few of the threads on this side of eternity. But on the other side of eternity, I think we'll see the whole tapestry. We'll see how all of our threads weave together and, and how God was magnified through each one of our individual legacies. Um, but I also want to talk to you about some of his priorities in ministry. Uh, the, first, the first I'll call standards. Uh, and something that I saw and that I learned from him is that there's never good enough when it comes to ministry. And I think that some of you who were on his staff could, could testify to that. Um, ministry isn't playtime, and the work of God is, is no small thing. Uh, and whether it's serving in full-time ministry or serving as a volunteer, the standard is our best. Uh, I listen to, to some of his old sermons on tape sometimes, and, and there's occasions where he stops worship and he cuts in and says, come on, I know we can sing better than that. Um, and whether it's singing or preaching, greeting people at the door, cleaning up and locking the doors afterwards, the standard is our best, and, and that's something that, that he always impressed. The other priority that I, that I want to speak uh, to you about is joy, the joy of the Lord. And, and uh, you know, I, I wrote this in advance, but just this morning and being here and, and seeing the joy of the Lord from the very moment that I stepped in the doors this morning was just, was just wonderful. And through worship and and all of our communion together. Um, but I found a column that Grandpa wrote back in the 1970s about the, about the growth that the church was experiencing, and, and I'd like to read part of that to you. He wrote, We are a rejoicing church, a praising church. What a thrill to see people coming down the aisle on Sunday morning, clapping and singing. I minister to people who spend their days fighting working conditions, fighting the devil, fighting traffic to and from work. They come to church bearing the scars. I cannot help how they come, but I am dedicated to sending them home happy, praising, rejoicing, ready to meet and beat the devil in the next round, praise God. Rejoicing that issues forth from getting to know his word and applying it to our everyday living. That is one reason why the people keep coming and every service sees first-time visitors, is being noised abroad through the whole area that he is in the house and in his presence there is fullness of joy. Where there is revival, there is rejoicing and rejoicing will open the way to greater reviving. A world gripped by, by depression and anger and fear and anxiety doesn't need a church that's sullen and downcast. 
It needs a church that's filled with the joy of the Lord and the victory that there is in Jesus Christ. Our circumstances may be dark. Our seas may be stormy. I don't deny that. But we rejoice in spite of our circumstances. There's power in Jesus Christ, not just to keep you hanging on, but to keep you dancing on the rock as well. And uh, they, there's a song that Grandpa used to sing, and, and some of you may know it, and it used to go, uh, it's amazing what praising can do. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's amazing what praising can do. Hallelujah. I don't worry when things go wrong. Jesus fills my heart with the song. Oh, it's amazing what praising can do. Hallelujah. And uh, of all the things I learned from my grandfather, that's what I hold most dear, to, to rejoice no matter what the circumstance. And uh, I, I'm here to speak about, about Grandpa and about his legacy, but I'd be remiss if I didn't also mention my grandmother, Miriam Owen. Um, uh, my grandfather was my hero, but if I've ever known a saint, it was Grandma. <laughs> I remember one time talking to Grandpa, and, uh, and he said to me about his, about his time at South Hills, I know some people liked me and some people didn't, but everybody loved your Grandma. He was so proud of her. He was so proud of how she mentored the other pastor's wives and how everything she did, she did with kindness and with a smile. And uh, I'll, I'll close here, but I want to leave you with, with one final thought. I was listening to a fellow the other day who, who was talking about genealogy, and I think that's fitting since, since we're here to celebrate this church's genealogy today. And he said, if you study your family tree and, and your history, your ancestry far enough, You'll find people who, who went through terribly difficult times, whether it's poverty or sickness or, or whatever. But they persevered. And the proof that they persevered is that you're standing here today. And churches are like that too, you know. Um, we're here today and we remember and we celebrate all the good times. But there were difficult times too. Uh, but, but by the grace of God and the leading of the Holy Spirit, we endured those difficult times, and we know that we endured those difficult times because we're here celebrating today. And so when difficult times come again, I hope they don't, but they will. But when they come again, we can stand firm in the knowledge that God carried us then, that he carried South Hills then, and by his grace that he'll carry us again. So thank you again, Pastor Pete, and so good to see you, Pastor Yourself. Amen. Hey, real quick, I, I, we want to give recognition to Pastor's daughter, Christine, and his wonderful son-in-law. Uh, would you guys please stand? Can we welcome the Van Leuvens this morning? Amen. And it's amazing how the momentum went on. We had, Elaine always refers to three churches under one roof, church number one. Church number two was Pastor Owen. But this beautiful sanctuary, church number three, Dr. Jack and Kay Stapp. So, come on. Let's give Pastor a good warm welcome. Thanks, Paul. God bless you. I got up there a little early. Yeah. That's all right. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. And what a joy it is to be with you today. We look forward to this with great anticipation of God's presence, God's power, God's strength, and the legacy that God has given to this particular body of believers as I look out of the congregation, there's so many wonderful, beautiful faces and, and familiar ones as well. And, but you're just, just a little bit older than the last time I saw you. <laughs> but I guess we are too. So. <laughs> but uh, I thank God for the legacy that God has given to this church from Pastor Paul and then Pastor Cyril Chegman. Followed you, Chegman. And then also, then, of course, Pastor Owen. 
And how, how, how much can I say in appreciation for Pastor Owen who established the foundation here when we came and how we love him and, and, and Miriam and we just praise God even though they're with, with the Lord for his legacy that he left here just as his grandson spoke just a few moments ago. And thank you so very much for sharing his words. Appreciate it. You know, God's been so good, so good to us all. He's brought us to a place where we can receive the miracles continuously. And this has been a place of miracles for a long, long time. A long, long time. Before I ever came, while we were here, after we were here, it's a place of miracles, just as Pastor Pete. And thank you, Pastor Pete, for sharing wherever you are. There he is. <laughs> Behind Pastor Paul. <laughs> I didn't think the Lord translated him yet. Did the rapture happen or what? <laughs> we wouldn't be here, would we? <laughs> but how God has just blessed this body of believers with miracles, with grace. We step into the presence of God and allow him to do his work in our hearts and our lives with a fervor that brings his favor upon us and that the strength of the Lord will continue to be our guide, be our help, and that they'll still be yours. I remember my, you know, my dad went home to be the Lord a couple of years ago. And um, one of the reasons why we retired, in fact, um, I was praying one day and I was having a little bit of problem with my heart and that kind of thing, physical heart. And the Lord was really helping me with that. So medical miracles, talk about miracles too. But at any rate, the, uh, I, I, I thought of uh, my dad and my, my dad is just one of these guys that, you, you, you love him or you don't, you know. He's, he's kind of an eccentric type of person, but he loved God, loved life, uh, loved his family, loved people, loved sports, whatever. And uh, one time we were, at, we go home, one of the reasons why we retired is so that I could build relationships with my parents who, I'm from Miami, and they lived in Miami, and uh, with our children, and with our children's children, and spend some special time with, with them. That was what the God's put in my heart to do in our transition. And, um, and so one particular day, I was taken to the license tag office, tags you put on your car. And um, uh, we got to the tag office there in Florida, and the line went right out the door. Well, inside, we looked inside. My dad and I got out, and we looked inside, and it was like, it was like an amusement park line. It was going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And my dad, in his own typical way, he said, what is this? I pay my taxes. <laughs> and uh, the more he said, the louder he got. And, and uh, I, I can't believe that they have this disorganization around here. I pay my taxes. I said it three or four times. And so... <laughs> evidently somebody heard him on the inside they came out and got him brought him into the counter you know brought us both in but brought him into the counter he was so loud and boisterous and so he's, he was looking around and said, what yeah he's just with this walker what, what what happened what happened why am I here you know why am I, I'm already up here and uh, so he, he looks well we're here to serve you and uh, he said we're sorry you had to wait so long we're here to serve you and he, you are, and he looked around to the rest of the, of the group that was a, a symbol there, you know, line for line, probably about 60 or 70 people. And he says, it's a miracle. <laughs> well, miracles come in small packages as well as large ones. And uh, we're so grateful for the miracles that God has given to us. Our God has allowed us to be able to sense his presence and his power in our hearts, in our lives, case been through two healing journeys over uh, cancer, and uh, we're so grateful to have her with us, you know. <laughs> Praise God. And uh, all, all the ministries that she's, she's led, been a part of over the years, whether here at South Hills Assembly or other churches where we served. And I just know that being a shadow of a doubt, God is going to keep South Hills Assembly of God in his, the palm of his hand, his favor. Our fervor brings on his favor. And that because of that, there'll be a sense of God's direction, God's hope, God's ability to touch each and every life that we touch because he is in us, because he is working through us. One of my favorite verses in all the word of God is, trust in the Lord with all your heart. He didn't say a little tiny piece of it. He said, with all your heart. And lean not, rely not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him. 
and he will direct your paths. He will make your paths straight. He will make them smooth, and I praise God for that. Well, some of you have asked about our kids. Uh, thank you so very, very much for ministering to our kids during the 90s when they were here and with us. We appreciate every children's teacher, every youth teacher um, that, they, that they had down through the way. Uh, our oldest is uh, he's still here in the, in the city. He's an oncologist. His wife is chairman of the biology department of the online school of nursing and uh, associated with Christian colleges, several Christian colleges. And so they're working here in the city. Uh, our second oldest, Sean, is in Biddeford, Saco, Maine, where he is a physician in a, in a uh, in the ER, emergency room. And uh, his wife is a daughter of the... Uh, a general overseer of the vineyard churches, and so they started a church in their home. So he's not only a physician, but he's also in in the, in a home in their home. They started a church, and now it's burst out the seams of that place and and developing on their own. And then our youngest, Pastor Jerry, which I think probably most of you remember, uh, he's up in Holt, Michigan, where he was when he left here, and their church has gone through their fourth building program. Uh, had over 600 in, in Easter attendance, and just really thriving for the, for the work of the Lord. So I just wanted to say all of that, to say thank you. Thank you to you for what you have done, uh, and for what, the, the fruit that you've placed in our own hearts and in our own lives. This is a wonderful season for Kay and I to be here in those 25 years. The many people we had on staff, but the, 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 uh, the wonderful volunteers we'd have We'd have suppers for volunteers and have three and four, 450 people at them. And uh, we are so grateful for the wonderful volunteers that we had through South Hills Assembly. So we are grateful. We are grateful for you. And we love you. And we're so thankful that, that you are here today and we can say hi to you. And uh, believe God that God will continue to lead and guide your life into miracles that he has in store for you. And it'll be a great blessing. To you and to others around you. Your families will thrive. Your relationships will thrive. And God will be blessed because you are on this planet. And he's placed you here. We've each got a little bit of an expiration date on our, on our bodies. We know that. But you know what? God has a promotion date for us all. And that's what we look forward to, isn't it? That's what we look forward to. Look forward to be, I look forward to being with Dad up there. I look forward to being with... Uh, the South Hills congregation, you know, even there, and Christians from all over the world. So God is good, and uh, we're so, so very thankful to be with you today. Can you give the Lord a good hand clap of praise today? Thank the Lord. Thanks, Pastor Jack. Thank you. Thank you. Isn't God good? Amen. Well, thanks, Pastor Jack. Thanks, Kay. I'd like all of the staff members that have been here through South Hills Assembly, they're right here in the first three rows. So all of you can get a good look at them. I'm just going to have them stand, and you can all give them a good warm welcome. So would all of you here in the first couple rows, would you? Amen. 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 I'm going to make this quicker than quick. What can you say about a guy like this? Uh, if you look up the word friendship, his face should be right there. Uh, he is a true friend. And everything this man has ever done has been successful. Uh, from district work, working with the couriers, being their manager. He started this. I, I followed you many, many years later in McKeesport. He he took McKeesport to a thriving, thriving church, left a, an amazing, thriving church to come to a church of nothing. And, but God was in it. Aren't you glad he said yes to the call of God? And then, then was an evangelist, and, and then a Christian Life Church Christian in, Camp, Life in, Camp, a, Hill. in Camp Hill. Uh, it's a, oh, my, I wish all of you could go see it sometime. Remember when you took Elaine and I through it and just, just was just giving God all the glory. It's a joy to have Pastor Paul Waslocki with us this morning. Can we give him an amazing thank you? Thank you. Thank you.
Well, good morning. I'd say I got up here a little early this morning, don't you? I, I, was, I was so concerned about climbing those steps that I was not going to make it. So I asked, Doug says, well, I'll help you. And he did. And I get up here and then I kind of upstage you. I'm sorry, I apologize for that. You know, so. It's just wonderful to be here. My heart is full, many emotions. And uh, it's regrettable I couldn't get here. We got into town about 9 o'clock last night. Uh, my dear wife is not well. She's not in anything serious, but she's got a really bad sinus infection. Had her to the doctor on Thursday. I took prescriptions, nothing helped. Had to go to urgent care Saturday, and then Slaughter got here a little later. And she's live streaming this morning. Hi, babe. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I, and my daughter back home, then, and, and uh, she would have loved been here. I wish she could have been here because I really wanted to honor her. Because we came uh, with three three families. It wasn't me picking. The, we wanted to have a home missions church here in in the South Hills area, and uh, they asked uh, at least three couples. They from uh, neighboring assemblies. South, uh, North Side Pittsburgh and Houston Assembly and uh, not troublemakers. Uh, no, they were really willing to take their children and start because they felt they wanted a full gospel witness, and which was great. And, and I serve on the missions committee, home missions committee here in the section and uh, was very involved in that, but never thought it would be me. And uh, after they'd gone through several uh, pastoral situations where they thought they were coming, um, it didn't work out. And he called me and he said, Paul, that's who they really want. All along, they want you and Nina. I said, I can't do it. I said, I can't. look what's going here. Look what's going. And so he called me after the third uh, turn down. He says to me, he called me Wiz. That's what the nickname. Hey, Wiz. He said, I got to tell you. He said, I think it's over. I said, what do you mean? He said, I think it's over. There's not going to be any church. And he said, are you sure you wouldn't reconsider? I said, Look, we're, we're, look, people are getting saved every week. The Lord's blessing. He said, okay, I'm just saying to you, have you, you talked to the Lord about it? I said, well, not as much as I should because I'm afraid he might say yes. <laughs> and I'm being cut level honest with you. So he says, he calls me again. And he says, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to meet with them Sunday afternoon and I'm going to give them bad news and I'm sure it's, it's, that's it. He says to me, uh, are you sure? And I felt a check right then. And I said, I'll tell you what, Harold. When you give them this news, because the pastor that was going to come in two weeks, his board got upset, gave him a big raise. He was from New York. And he ch changed it. You know, so here they are. And it's not all about money, but that's, and I can't say that's what happened. I'm just telling you that was the circumstances. And, uh, I said, okay, Harold, I'll tell you what, when you tell them, because we got to have a church, we got to have a church. I said, if you tell them and they bring up nine on my name again, that that's who they really feel, I'll take that as the will of the Lord and I'll resign today. Now, this is Sunday afternoon after morning worship. He, he, we hung up the phone and I turned to my wife in the kitchen. I said, we're going. She said, what? I said, we're going. How do you know? I said, I feel it here. Sure enough, 4 o'clock he called, and I went right to the prayer room of the church, wrote out my resignation, and resigned Sunday night before I could change my mind. And uh, it was very hard. That was my wife's home church. A lot of folks, how could you do this? How could you? But look what the Lord did. Not, 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 none of this is me, but the fact that we got here. We started with three families. We met for a little while in the South Hills Village till we could get a place and we moved to Castle Shannon Fire Hall and that's where we, we turned the kitchen into a little nursery. I went door to door, door to door, uh, trying to introduce myself, convince them that I wasn't a Jehovah's Witness or a Mormon and that we were on legit and that's really how we got this property. We went all over. They said, where do you want to go? So I went to Mount, Mount Lebanon, Upper Sinclair, Dormont. I was all over the place. We didn't have any money. 
We did get $6,300 from the district. They had raised an offering at district council. So we came with our two little boys, uh, 1965, PJ, my uh, son was born Christmas of 63, so you know how young, and Rick was really in diapers, just a few months old. He's the one that's on the mission field now, and, and, and that's how 990 came. That's why I say I wish I could honor because she paid the price. She paid the price. She played the piano till we had someone come in that was good. I don't know if you remember Ruth Schock. Ruth's wonderful. The Schock family were great people. You know, I'm sorry. I didn't take time to, uh, right? you know I love you all. You guys were on staff, and Jack and Kay, I told them how thrilled I am to see her looking so healthy, how we prayed. But anyway, we'll have time more of that some other time, But because I, I got to get into the Word. But, but anyway, this is God. I went all over. And uh, where do you find ground with, the, with that kind of money? Nothing. There wasn't nothing. I can't tell you how it really happened. We sat down the other day and I said to Nina, how did we come in 65 and in six, January of 28th of 1968, we dedicated the building? How did we do that? Well, we didn't. It was God. It was God. It was God. Now... Now, while we started, with, now we started with three families. It wasn't long until several other families from uh, assemblies, churches came when they knew it was really going to happen, and and helped us. And and like I say, I went all over the place, and finally was led back here. I didn't want this ground. I I told them it's not big enough. We need more ground. What are you going to do for the future? And I, so you can hate me for that that you don't have more room to expand. Not really hate, just not appreciate. You know. But anyway, now where I'm at in Camp Hill, God bless, we started 17 acres, we got 55 acres now on that campus. So God made, but down here it was tough. And, and uh, went back to the Cantwells that lived out here on the corner. Had, had a nice visit with me before, came back, talked to him about the property. He trusted me, he trusted us to carry some money, took what we had to give him. You know, little is much when God is in it. And that's how, that's how it all happened. That's how it happened. I mean, God moved so many times. I had a little salary. I remember when we came uh, in, in the, uh, in, and we had built, built the building, but we, were, we weren't in it yet. We had to put the pews and the altar and, and, and get chairs. And we're saying, you know, I always felt pastors should lead the way. And so I said, Nino, what are we going to do? We're, this Sunday, we're going to raise the money for the pews. And I, so we, we, we said, well, we got to, and, you know, one pew was more than we made for the week. And, and, you know, with two little kids, and I was living 17 miles away, driving here, no money for gas. Just, just we got packing a lunch sometimes and, and out here working. That's how you did. And then study on the extra time. You do what you got to do. And God blesses. God blesses. And, and, and in the end, why, uh, in the end, it's... Uh, I better get to preaching because I forgot where I was going with that. Isn't that terrible? I want to talk to you for just a little while today about, uh, like, if I was your coach coming back, looking at where you are, and it's just wonderful. Your building is beautiful, beautiful congregation, marvelous spirit, great pastor and pastoral staff, and I've loved you guys forever, you know. We go clear back to your days in college. So, but I want to talk to you about running a race. Talk to you like a coach. Bring a little sports in here if you don't mind. You know, the book of Hebrews is written to the Hebrew uh, Jewish people who were very discouraged and uh, facing terrible persecution. Uh, the other purpose of the book was to uh, prove the supremacy of the Lord Jesus Christ because uh, over the Old Testament, over all the Old Testament prophets. And you read that if you start through. If you just go to your Bible and look at the beginning of the Bible, uh, of the chapter of Hebrews, usually before the first chapter of any book of the Bible, you can just get a synopsis, and you'll see that right in there, you know. But, and I want to go to the 11th chapter, which is sometimes called the Hall of Fame chapter in the Bible, because it's God's Hall of Faith, people who by faith lived and finished the race. Now, this chapter is more than just giving us a historical perspective of these great saints of God uh, of the past, but it provides insight into how you and I ought to live so that we do not give in to discouragement and, and fall us along the side 
in this race called life. In the Bible, we are usually referred in the New Testament two ways. We are either in a fight or we are in a race. Paul said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. I've finished the course. And now, the Olympics um, of that day the, the, were very important. Racing, was running was very important. And it had been for several centuries before this book was bit, written. In fact, and historians tell us that they, had, they would put a basin of blood down before uh, the, the starting line, or I don't know how far back, and some of the racers would go over and dip their hands in the blood, signifying they were going, this was like a race to the death. They were going to give it their all in all. And, and, and so uh, that's what I want to, that's where I want us to be today. Look at Hebrews 12. Let it come up on your screen. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, since, what's therefore? That's the connection from the previous chapter. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and that sin that so easily entangles. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him, talk about the prize, he looked forward, he looked forward, that's what we got to do, endured the cross, scorned its shame, sat down at the right hand of God. So Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 gives us a picture of the Christian life as a race. And it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. It's all our life. And you say, I don't feel like being in the race. You may not even be in the race. If you have not accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, if you've not made him Lord of your life, you're not, even, you're not even eligible to be in the race. Did you know that? But once you make that commitment to Christ and you surrender your life to him and tell him, I'm going to live for you, you are in the race whether you want to be or not. The sad thing is some people drop out. They may still come to church. They may still be a member. They may be the best friends of the preacher. It doesn't matter. If you're not living for God, you have dropped out of the race. Now, we don't all have the same race. We all don't have the same race. I'm called to a particular race because of the call of God on my life as a minister. There are people that have a very difficult home situation or marriage that it's an incredible Feet for them even to come to church and sing the praises of the Lord. We think everybody's happy and perfect because of our wonderful praise. But there are a lot of people beyond that that are hurting. They're hurting physically and they're hurting amazing, uh, uh, emotionally. You know, there are people, you know, there's a person in a wheelchair. She doesn't, you don't run, sister, the same race somebody that's healthy. God sees just where you are. Someone who has a child that's slightly retarded or a Down syndrome baby. There's a different race you are called to run. And God doesn't ask more of you or, or, or he asks for you to be faithful in where you are, are placed. You know, that was big for me, what I'm just telling you. That's what I honestly believe. And our pastors that are here, Doug and Carrie, and uh, you, you know, uh, it was very important to me uh, that our pastors looked at where the people were. All staff members have an assignments all week and also Sunday morning, whether it's on the keyboard as Pastor Luke or whatever the situation. But it's bigger than that. It's bigger than that. When we come to church as shepherds, the sheep are coming in. A good shepherd examines the sheep. He checks to see if there's something. That well, we can't do that. We're not doing that. But I'm talking about in the spirit. The spirit of the Lord will direct you. And I would tell them, fellas, you can be going down the aisle or you can be in the foyer and you got to get somewhere because, you know, some, and God just checks your spirit. You may need to say something. I got this. Take care of it right now. And you minister to that person. People respond and are helped when we respond. Most many times I tell guys, your greatest ministry this Sunday may not be what you think you're supposed to do, but what God will use you to do beside your assignment. Does that make sense for you? That's what we do. That's what we do. Now in this, we're all in this together, you see. It's, you know, in fact, look at these two verses. Three times it says, let us. Three times. And in this book, it says, let us 16 times, which is 
uh, uh, to me, a suggestion. It's us. It's not, a, it's not an I situation. It's not an individual. We're individuals, but we're a body. Now, what are we supposed to do? Let's just look through it real quick. Number one, we're to throw off. Let us throw off. Now, the force of the verse in the original says, do it now. In other words, it puts an urgency to it. An urgency. Everything that hinders. You know, throw, I think of that, I think of a racer. You know how they dressed in the Bible days with the outer tunic? You'd have to take that off. How, how would a person run like that? So anything that hinders, you throw off. Now, it's not talking about sin. It's not talking about sin here. But it may be something in your life that when you really get close to the Lord or God gets close to you, you're nudged about that. And the Lord, Holy Spirit just nudges you and, and, and he says to you, and you say to me, oh, what's the harm? I mean, today anything goes, folks. People drink, smoke, do the whole bit, but we're all going to heaven. If we're all going to heaven, it's not going to be much of heaven when we get up there, friends, if it's like it's here on earth. Hello? So, I'm talking to you this morning. I prayed and I believe during this next few minutes of the message, the Holy Spirit's going to begin already speaking to you. I don't know. You could be a praise singer and everybody thinks you've got the world, but God's going to talk to you. Is he talking to you now? Something that hinders Something that keeps you from being, yeah, 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 he's talking. It's not something bad, but it, it holds you back. People say, well, what's the harm? Well, it's not a sin, but it's a weight. It keeps you back from what your potential could be. Now, did you know the Pittsburgh Pirates back in the mid-1960s had a player called Howie Goss, you can look it up, G-O-S-S. -S. He was not a starter. He was on the roster, and he was a reserve. But he was fast. He could run, well, he could run fast. You know what he did? This is hard to believe. He put five-pound weights on each leg while he's in the dugout. That's in the history of the Pirates. You go back and look it up. He was known for that. And later in the... They had to get into the seventh, eighth inning, and they need a pinch runner. I got somebody. We got to get a. We got to get up. They put him in. He takes the. They took the weights off, and old Speedo's ready to go. He said when they interviewed him, How, "Why would you do that? That's uncomfortable." He said, "I found that for several minutes after I took those weights off, I could run faster than I normally could run." Think of that. I'll apply it to your life and my life. It's confession time. I've never told anybody in my whole life what I'm going to tell you now. Never told it publicly. But here I am. I come, and it's not bad. I am hope it's going to encourage you. It's not, oh, I did say confession time, though, didn't I? Uh, no, I was, uh, I come to Pastor McKeesport. It had gone through some difficult times. And I come out of Bible school. There was nowhere to go. I'm trying to find church. I go as a counselor to youth camp, trying to be, a couple of guys booked me for revival meetings in the fall. But here's the kick. I was, I was engaged in my life, wife, Nina Jo. Nina Jo was from that church. And she was in, in nurses training at Homestead Hospital School of Nursing. So here we are in the summer when I wasn't at camp or somewhere, I'm in church with her Sunday morning, Sunday night. We're sitting there dating, you know, just like... Couples do, and everybody got to know us, you know. Well, the preacher says to me, after a couple months, he was going in July, I got to go away for a few weeks. Paul, would you like to preach? I, oh, I'd love it. I'd love it. So he let me preach those six weeks. Can you believe it? Six weeks. Well, we had a time. I mean, I worked. Now, I'm, I, I just like to keep a place clean. That's important to me. The bushes look shabby. They need a trim. So I got on the phone with him in Florida. I said, he said, hey, how's it going? I said, it's going good. I said, I got a favor. Would you mind if we trim the bushes up? I said, I just want to make things look a little nicer. You know, I always feel Sunday company is coming. Company is coming, you know. 
No, go ahead, Paul, go ahead. So we trimmed up the bushes. We got things looking a little. I didn't do it for anything for me. It's for the Lord. It's for, I wasn't trying to get brownie points with someone. I just honestly, it's the Lord, you see. You do what you can for the Lord. I come back, and, and uh, I'm preaching my first revival meeting in Wilkinsburg, and the phone rings. And they say to me, the preacher resigned tonight. Or this week. I said, oh, I'm so sorry. He said, we're calling Brother Paul. Would you like to be our pastor? I said, I, I can't. <laughs> I can't go. In fact, next week I was going to be with Brother Bongiorno in Punxsutawney uh, uh, for his, uh, you know, he encouraged me. Again. And, and, and she said, oh, no, you don't need to come candidate. We heard you for six weeks. You, are you willing? Are you willing? So that's how we got there. So now I said all that to say this. Now I'm the preacher. I'm I'm on the Monday night prayer meeting. I'm, I'm around the altar with the people, on, and I've moved from being there just with Nina. Now I'm the man, you know, so I'm, 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 in, I'm in that leadership role. And, and it was going great. The people respected me, and Nina's mom's in the church. And my mom and dad's coming. I was from Trafford originally. Mom and dad's coming over Sunday nights to be there, see their boys, first church. And, and, but, you know, I'm still dating. I'm pastor. But, you know, we're still dating. She can't just sit there in the dorm all, all week long and say, well, we're engaged, but he's busy in the church. So we dated. And you know what we like to do? We like to go to the Penguins games. Does anybody think that's wrong? Better not, because I still enjoy them. I still enjoy them. Now, I don't get there, but, and I'll tell you why. So we would go. Saturday night, they, well, last night they played the Bruins. That's been a tough one, I suppose. But anyway, I would, <laughs> we would go there, and we'd have a great time. And I'd take her back, be, go back to the dorm, give her a couple hugs and kisses, and away I go, back home, talk, talk to the Lord a bit, jump in bed, up early at 6. Now, Lord, bless this morning. Bless, Lord, you know we need your help. I did that for a little while, and then I began to feel the nudge. Nudge, boy, you're desperate. You want me to touch you. How about last night? How about... Uh, so, and it, the point is, it's not a sin. It's something that hinders. So, I've never been a, to a Penguins game since. Neither is she. I still enjoy them. But in my role there with the church, wasn't any... They didn't even know I was going to the Penguins. The Holy Spirit. And from that time on, Saturday night was with the Lord. See, there's a reason why churches grow, you know. It's called paying the price. And I thought I was paying the price. I was doing everything good. But that's an example. So in your life, I don't know. Who knows what? It's not something. We already know what the major sins in. Just read the Ten Commandments. We all know those are the, those are the no-nos. Some of the other things that people call sin, really a lot of that's cultural. A lot of that's how you were raised, you know. And, and God's not saying it's wrong. But the Lord will lead you and guide you as to what you really ought to do in your life. Now let's go on to a second one here. Throw off the sin. Now we're into sin. Throw off the sin that so easily entangles you. Uh, well, do I need to talk much about that? If, there, if, you're, if you're not, if you don't have, you know, I'm, I can't talk you into or out of it. You know if you're going to win the race and if you're going to be faithful to finish the race, you can't live in sin. Number three. Let us run with perseverance. Now, the verb here is in the present operative. The uh, original language uh, it would say to keep on running. Don't run, but keep on running. Not just a little while, but we are called to run till we're all the way home. In the original, it's the word agona, A-G-O-N-A. -A. It's where we get the English word agony. Haven't you seen some of these runners from marathons or even some of them running along the highway? And I look at that face, I look on their face, and I, I've said to my wife more than once, sure looks like he's having fun. <laughs> well, he, he's, you know, maybe I should be doing that, but there's a price to pay there, you know? You got to keep going. You're going to fall down. Listen, true story. Forrest Arnold Forrest Arnold is a great, great friend of mine. You remember Coach Arnold? He was an All-American basketball player at Memphis State years ago. Paul told this to the young people when he preached a youth camp for me in Green Lane, Pennsylvania. He said, true story, way back in, in a, little, a little school, uh, was, had a great team that could run 
the marathon, the mile, uh, the mile in the state finals. They were there, and they were small school. In those days, they didn't have the WPIO with all the divisions, big schools against big schools. And, and, and this little school was going up against all the others. And you look at them, there were two guys that, that were just built like greyhounds. I mean to tell you, you just knew they could long-legged, they really could pick it up and put it down. In fact, the guy that would ring the, run, run the last lap, he had already had a full ride scholarship to a major college. But the little guy in the front, uh, they called him Bones. And when you looked at him with the little shorts on, the biggest thing on his legs were his two knees. They had knobby knees sticking out, bones. But he had fire, and he was a great way to lead. He had a great way to run the, the race in the first lap. So they're ready. The gun goes off. They went charging out, and he was charging too hard, and he slipped and fell into the cinders, dug into him. But he got up. He got up. He had to go. He kept going. He kept going. He kept going, and when he finished, he was at least 25 feet behind the other guy said, the second guy took the baton and he made up a little, but not much. This little guy was off. He, he, he just, oh, he blew it. The third guy picked up a, a, some more of it and the fourth guy took that. And he was, and all of a sudden the people, it got close and close and close. And, and the guy that ran like a greyhound won by a length and a half and the place went wild. Well, the team there, Man, they're going, they're going crazy, you know. That. We won, we won, they're going crazy. And then they're looking for bones. Bones isn't there. They look over at the chain link fence over there, and there he is, you saw him sobbing, sobbing. They went over and picked up bones, and they put him on his shoulders, and they carried him like a Hebrew, uh, not Hebrew, hero. I'm preaching to Hebrews, folks. <laughs> I'm watching the time, and I'm trying to say everything I want to say, you know. So... You know, and they carried him around and say, why would you do that? They said, Bones, if you had quit, if you hadn't gone up and finished the race, we would have never had a chance. Is that true? So wherever you are today, you're in the church, but you're on the sidelines. Get back in the race. Not only is that important for you, it's important for people that will follow you. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, my friends, my friends. So you might say, well, you know, that's easy for you to talk. You know, you're a preacher. No, listen, everybody God used in the Bible had warts. They had things wrong with them. You know, none of them were, I mean, we can call them giants of the faith. But what about Noah? Noah got drunk. You say, well, the daughters, that was their fault. Yeah, but he had to drink it. What about Jacob? He was known to be a liar. The Bible talks about him as a deceiver. What about Moses? He's coming along and out of the burning bush, God reveals himself to him that he's calling him, Moses, are you I'm not qualified. I can't, I can't even talk. Stutterer. Lord, that's okay. Raise up someone to help him. I mean, they could go on and on. Rahab, she made her living pleasuring women, men. She was a prostitute. David, shepherd boy, sling with five stone, down goes the giant. Saul says, you know what they said? Saul slain his thousands, David slain his ten thousands. He wrote the 23rd Psalm. What about David? Well, how about the time when he had the affair? How about the time he set his, her husband up to go on the front lines in the war? Isn't that murder? How about Samson? He was a womanizer. How about Elijah? He was suicidal. He could go up and do great things with prophets of Baal, and then he ran for his life and complained to the Lord there was nobody else with him, ready to quit. How about Jonah, preacher? called great honor. I'm sending you down to Nineveh. You're the one. And he ran. He chickened out. I'm not doing it. I'm not going there. How about Job? Job went bankrupt. Now, it wasn't his fault. But Job went through a difficult point, problem. How about Peter? He denied the Lord, and the Lord even warned him about it and told him, told him 
<laughs> Before the cock crows, you're going to deny, deny me three times. Not only did he deny him, he cursed. Peter said bad words. How about the disciples? Yeah, they were, they were mighty men of God, called of God. But they were doubters. Wouldn't you and me, we all have our times of doubt. Thomas was one of the chief ones. He said, even when he found out, he was like, oh, I won't believe it. If I don't see the mark in his nails in him and inside, I won't believe it. And then the Lord appeared. And that same Thomas, what did he say? My Lord, my God. And the disciples. I know they were spiritual giants come, but sometimes they were spiritual wimps. They had the communion. Jesus prepared, tried to prepare, prepare them. Come on, we must go now. They head for Gethsemane. And, and he goes there and he prays. He takes a couple of the fellows with him and they go a little further. He says, watch. He, you know, he comes back in an hour and they're all, they're all sleeping. The disciples, the mighty men of God. What I'm trying to say to you, no matter, you can't have a pity party and get away with it. You got a man up and woman up and say, I'm going to serve the Lord no matter what comes my way. Physically, socially. Praise God. Praise God. And, you know, a lot of disappointments come. I mean to tell you. You know, I'm thinking of a couple. They were in a church like some of you young couples. They love God. They sought the Lord to the altar. They had gotten married, been married a couple years. Felt the Lord directing them to go to Africa. They got excited about that was not an Assemblies of God missions uh, uh, church, but there was a good evangelical church. And so they applied to their board of missions, made applications, got the preliminary uh, things back, went for interviews. Uh, things looked good. They come home and said, oh, we're excited. It looks like we're going to Africa. And some people say, well, I'll help you support. And Doug and Susan had just been through that uh, for that two-year deputation period. How you're hoping that people will help you. So the word was out. They had to go to New York uh, uh, because they had had final uh, physical exams and they also do psychological exams. I don't know if you realize that with a missionary. The, you know, when you're going overseas, you've got to handle all kinds of situations. You can't just stand up there and preach. And so they have to have, go through a battery of tests. And, then, and, and when they went to New York for the final meeting, they were devastated when the missions board told them they didn't think his wife was strong enough physically to endure the rigors of where they wanted to go in Africa. And so they came home devastated. He served the Lord, went on, but it was tough. It was tough. And after a while, one day he says to her, you know, honey, I know we're... I know it didn't work out. We were so sure, but I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I said, I'm dedicating myself to making money for the Lord. Not for me, but for the Lord. Everything extra that we can do, we're going to give the missions. We can't go, but others can. You might know that man's last name. It's Welch. He found that his dad did the unfermented juice. He made every month the unfermented grape juice for communion in the church. And this boy got together with his dad and they began to talk and branch out. And today, Welch's grape juice, buy Welch's grape juice, buy Welch's grape juice. Welch's grape juice has given millions of dollars to the missions. Isn't that incredible? Stay in the race. What if they quit? Stay in the race. Finish, finish, keep on going, keep on going, you know. There's many things we don't understand. I'm thinking of another missionary couple. Uh, they were, uh, he was an educator, you know, and, and every, not everybody who goes to the mission field is, is a preacher. There are medical people that go. There are educators who lead our Bible colleges. There are attorneys. There are anywhere, any kind of uh, background. And, and this man uh, was a great educator, a wonderful educator. He got hit head on in a crash, and his wife lost her eyesight in both eyes, devastated them. Devastated. How could this be God? You know, there's things that happen we all say, how could this be God? I'm not saying God did that. I'm just saying that in spite of it, God says, just keep trusting. Just keep trusting. 
Let me bring you through it. In time, she learned Braille. She learned Braille. They're on the mission field. He leads the college and trains the missioners. And she has got a wonderful ministry to the blind developed in that town. And God's reaching people that they would have never thought they would even try to reach because the people couldn't even see the scriptures. That's how God works. That's how God works. You know, I want you to see something on the screen. And I asked them to leave it up for you. This is not original to me. I heard Dr. George Wood give this to at one of our minister's meetings. She wrote this poem. A woman that lost her eyesight and thought she lost it her missions career, but she never quit. She never stopped. She said, if I should quit before my work is done, the work commissioned by God's only son, how could I stand before him on that day? How could I face him? What would I say if I should quit? Just drop out of the race. I wonder if someone would take my place. And would I cause a Christian friend to fail if I should quit? And or some well, reject God's call if I should quit? How can I face myself and lay so many scriptures on the shelf? A quitter or a conqueror I can be. And God has called, left the choosing up to me. No, everything doesn't always go us way. In fact, if you'll finish the last part of Hebrews chapter 11, after he lists a number of the great heroes of the faith, it lists a number of people that went through terrible things, that terrible things jeered by people, terrible things killed by people, wandering in the mountains. And the, and the Lord just wraps it up by the reader of Hebrews saying, these were not worthy. They were not worthy. Of, of, of what happened to them. You see, that's where we're headed in America. I won't want to get political, but we are living in a world that's plagued by sin and corruption. Hear me. Morality is declining. It's not only declining, it's now openly embraced. Depraved behavior is now what was right is wrong. What is wrong is now right and correct. And anger and resentment towards Judeo-Christian values is greatly, greatly increasing. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to do what I've been talking about for the last 25 minutes. We're going to keep on running. We don't know what's going to happen. We're going to keep on running. We, we, we've made up our mind. It's like the old song I was rated it's on. I've decided to follow Jesus. Though others turn back, I won't turn back. So I close. Remember, winners never quit. And quitters never win. So... What's the first verse we read? Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witness. Oh, we can't forget that. Picture in the sky. Picture unseen in the sky, that great amphitheater. That great, those bal balconies with millions of souls that the Lord has redeemed that are waiting. They're waiting. I don't know right where it's at, but he has them and they're waiting. They are the witnesses he's talking about here. These great heroes of the faith, people that thought they were nobodies and nobody recognized them down here, but there's somebody now. They're in the heavens rejoicing with the Lord and they're counting on you. They're looking for you. The race is still on. The finish line is still ahead. Maybe for me pretty quick, maybe for you a little longer, but we're going to finish it. We're going to finish it strong. We're going to go into eternity loving Christ in a very special way. Praise God. Praise Lord. Jesus is late waiting. Well, I got to stop. Fix your eyes on Jesus. That's where the prize is. Fix your eyes on Jesus who endured. He endured looking ahead to his Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh God. Oh God. Thank you today for the word of the Lord. 
Thank you for the challenge, the instructions of what we're to do. We're to move forward in you. Lord, right now, just seal in heaven what's happening in people's hearts here. We know what's happening. We know there's things happening for you for good. Bless them today. In Jesus' name we are. Amen. Wasn't that a fantastic challenge this morning? Amen. See, I don't know if Pastor Paul knows this. In a short period of time, we're going to be handing the baton to Pastor Luke and Bree. And uh, it's a process. We're going through a process. But I thought with Pastor Jack here and Kay and Paul, Dr. Bill Ellis, who's been walking this, Bill, it's been two years now that we've been in this process of handing the baton to Pastor Luke. So, Bill, if you and Teresa will come. Paul, I want you to stay right there. Dr. Jack, step if you and Kay would come. And uh, I'd, I'd like Bree and Luke to come. Elaine, come on, sweetheart. Well, Pastor Luke, you're on the hot seat, so <laughs> but I think you can take it. Why don't you stand right here, bud? Come on, Bree. And uh, Pastor Jack, would you? Can I ask you guys to just reach your hands? Because we've ran our race, haven't we? It's been a good race. It's been a great race. Yep. A lot of cinders. Pastor Owen used to say, if I'm going in the fight, I want to go in the fight with the guy who has a broken nose because he's been there before. He's been there before. So Jack, would you lead us in prayer? And our specific, we're praying for these two. Oh, our dear Heavenly Father, how we thank you for this morning. And we thank you, dear God, for your wonderful grace that calls us to a time like this. And, Father, I thank you that we have grace for the race. And so does this wonderful couple, dear God, that, that you have anointed, as you have placed upon them the commissioning to be able to be pastoral leaders at Southwest Assembly of God. We thank you, dear God, that you will continue to strengthen them. Father, uplift them, help them. Help them to be, be uh, all that you want and have in mind for them to be. And Father, I pray to God that your word will be strongly within their hearts and minds, that the Holy Spirit, dear God, will have preeminence within them, dear God, and that they will always give glory to you. And now, Father, I thank you that as our Father, that you are the God who oversees it all, and that, Father, you oversee their lives and their influence and their leadership. And today we thank you, dear God, for commissioning them. And Father, thank you, dear Lord, that you are the one who does that. You're the one who, through your Holy Spirit, accomplishes great things within us. And Father, I thank you that, Lord, that you have called this body of believers to continue to have miry clay ministries, that he brought us out of the miry clay, and that he has set our feet upon the solid rock to stay, and that he is the one that we rejoice in. He is the one that we have our joy. He is the one who, in whom we have our life. And Father, I pray, dear God, that you will bless this wonderful couple, Father, with wisdom, with grace, with hope, with help, with service, dear God, the strength to serve. And Father, I pray, dear God, bless, bless Pastor Luke and Pastor Bree, dear God. And Father, give to them every gift and grace necessary to lead this congregation on. And Father, we love you and we praise you. Father, we praise you from the bottom of our hearts. You are our God. And we believe, dear God, that this morning is a key a time of increasing the legacy of South Hills Assembly of God. And that, Father, this legacy will uh, touch hearts and lives of not just hundreds, but thousands, dear God, in the days and the weeks and the months and the years that are ahead. Father, we want not to uh, forget that we are in a race. There are times that we have to pick out the cinders out of our knees. And but we get up and we go on and we worship you and we serve you and we love you and we praise you because of the great and good God that you are. And so, Father, we ask your God that you will just uh, send your anointing upon them. 
Your anointing like a mantle fall upon them. Let the Holy Spirit fall, dear God, upon them and upon this place. The Father, to accomplish every good thing that you're as a part of the dream that you have for South Hills Assembly. And bless, I pray, every leader, every board member, every pastoral staff person. But Father, bless immensely the volunteers, dear God, that Father, give their hearts, give their lives, give their fortune, give them of themselves to this uh, cause, dear God, that you have raised them. Father, that you'll be able to finish the dream, dear God, in, in the ways that will uh, usher in the return of Jesus Christ. So, Father, I thank you. I pray for your blessing in Jesus' wonderful and glorious name. Father, we ask now that you would grant upon Pastor Luke and Pastor Bree your wonderful wisdom and pleasure and glory and encouragement and strength. And it's the wonderful name of Jesus we pray. And everybody said, Amen. 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 All right, this is what we're going to do. We don't want you to leave. We want you all. I want all of you. Come on, from the balcony. Come on down. We're going to get a good picture for generations to come. Does that sound good? So all the staff, if you'll come here on the steps, and then all the rest of you, would you just come? We're going to face that way. And then we're going to end with a special song tonight, today, Pastor Luke. Okay, at the very end. So would you come? Come on. Let's all stand. Come on. Come on. Come on, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then we're going to let you go. There you go. Oh, that's it. God bless you, gang. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh, you all look great. You all look great. So we got a cameraman up there. We'll, we'll take a picture a couple ways. Once this way, then we'll do a goofy picture. Got to do a goofy picture, but we're going to do a serious picture first. And we all want to take, remember back in the 70s, one way? So in a moment, there you go. Who knows, maybe a hundred years from now, this picture may be seen. Cameraman up there, can you get it? All right, all right. Oh, this looks great. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okie dokie. Well, cameraman, are you ready? All right, on three, we're going to just give the biggest smile we've got. Ready? Wait, 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 wait. One more coming down. You can make it. Okay, ready? On three. One, two, three. All right, now this time, let's all take our right hand, just point it forward with our finger. One way, Jesus. That's going back a long way. One, two, three. You get it? And then one, I want you all to be kind of goofy. Maybe put rabbit ears behind them. One, two, three, go. Okay, good enough. Now let's pray. Isn't God good? And now may the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, may he bless you, may he keep you, may he make his face continually shine upon every one of you and grant you his amazing shalom, shalom, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and all God's people said, give the Lord a great big thank you.
you, Jesus. You are so good. You are faithful from generation to generation, from age to age. Thanks for worshiping with us. We love you. Have a great week. See you right back here next Sunday. Be blessed.